three, two, one. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Fireside Gaming Podcast. It's currently April 5th, 2019, and our first guest ever on the show. We're joined by Aculite today. What up, man? Hello, hello. Dude, I'm so happy that uh, you know you decided to join me on this. I uh, It was kind of like I was asking him on a date, you know? I felt <laughs> like I was like... I was nervous. I was like, "Oh man, I haven't done a podcast with anybody before." Have you? Do you ever listen to podcasts Sweating. or anything? I have a couple times. Yeah, yeah. it's a uh, it's very soothing. It's something you can listen to in the background, right? While yeah, you're doing I mean, some other stuff. It's a different format. I like to listen to it like if I'm at the gym or commuting. I know you commute for work every day to your office. <laughs> Ten steps. It's a long travel distance. Do you, wait, yeah. do you stream in your studio or like in your bedroom? In in house, yes. In your Not house? in my bedroom. Okay. I, I don't like doing computer in the bedroom. I did that before and you just yeah. you never leave. You just never leave. Dude, I mean that I, that's how everybody starts though, right? You got your yeah. your room, your your office in your bedroom, you spend your, all your time there, and then it's just yeah, you never leave the room. It's terrible. I actually got it out a big uh, issue. Yeah. I got out to PAX East over the past uh I it was a week, a week or so ago. First time ever out PAX East. I was in Boston. You're on the east coast of Canada, right? Somewhere Correct. out there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty similar to where I'm at. I'm up in the Pacific Northwest. But, man, I I had never been approached by more people. Obviously, like, that's the place where it would happen is at, you know, an event with Facebook as well, which is what I was oh, at. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, but it was crazy, man. It was uh it was a really different experience and I got to go up on stage when I was there too. And like, we had this huge event where like people were actually competing in the, in the event. There were some other streamers that were competing and, um, I had never, uh, I don't know. It was weird. Cause I was casting it. I had another caster who I hadn't worked with before. And, uh, it, it was really, it was interesting, man. It was, it was kind of, it was very nerve wracking kind of like even starting this podcast and, and doing this was like, it's a new experience, right? So yeah, so out of no, out of your comfort that's with zone, anything, you know? right? Yeah, as soon as you step outside that comfort zone, yeah. it's like, whoa, this is new. But it's good, like that's it's good, yeah. That's what it's exactly. It's, uh, that's what I was kind of hoping when when you were going to join me for this was like, uh, that's what I was hoping for, you know, just, just do you something want the different, back? do something yeah. new. But that's how you that's how you grow. It's how you expand. It's how you figure stuff out. Um, I sort of man that's what I tell everyone like yeah. you always have to be doing something new that's why I can never play like we're already jumping into something but <clears throat> yeah dude I like I've been offered I've been offered to join like pro teams and stuff way back when we were playing PUBG a lot and I just I have to decline them because I just I know I'll drive myself insane playing the same game over and over have I you have to play new stuff have you ever competed like on a stage or anything no, I've never done games? that. No? No. Interesting. I mean, you started... No. How long have you even been creating content? Um, God. Probably, like, from the very start, probably five years now. But not... It's been very off and on. Like, I would, I would just post something for myself. It wouldn't be for an audience or anything way back in the day. Just to see, like, what I could do for editing and all that. Yeah. And then, and then I turned into wanting to take it a little bit more seriously, like adding music and all that stuff. Like that's that's basically what got me started. Is I loved adding, adding music and like an intro and outro, all that type of stuff, and making it like a nice little video, right? Well, that's what I noticed when I was looking at your content too. Was it was just like, it was so high quality. Like obviously the gameplay was super good, but also just like. Your intro, the everything, the whole it was it was a whole experience that you brought your audience through, and I think that's something that they hugely appreciate as well. Um, but that was how, like, uh, you know, one of the most top, top co questions that I got from this was, how did we even meet, and uh, how did we start playing together? Um, and I, if I remember correctly, it was I just got some Twitter messages of people saying, people in comments saying, "Hey, you should play with Aculite. You should play with this guy." And yeah, um, you, you hit me up out of nowhere. Yeah, literally, like I was just getting, I was just getting message after message, like you should play with this Aculite guy, he's a beast, and um, you know, I I went and actually was looking at your videos, and I was like, Jesus, dude, because you know, I come from back, I 
I'm kind of new to PC gaming even still, I feel like at least, but... Really? I mean, I, okay, I've been doing it for a long time now. I've been playing for like four or five years now, so I've, I've got a lot of experience, but especially like... Okay, the, but... Early. Yeah, still, that's that's infancy. Yeah, for sure. Like, when it comes to PC, I I've been playing console for my whole career, and I was good at console. So for me to go to PC and just get smashed left and right, I was like, uh, I was struggling. And so when I was playing like PUBG when that came out, I was struggling to get a win on that game. It took me a long time to get a solo win. And and wait, so how long did it? How long were you playing PC when before you messaged me? Uh, I mean, I was playing, like, I had played Battlefield Hardline on PC. That was, like, what okay. I played the most of. I played a little bit of Battlefield 4 on PC, uh, but even when I was making those PC videos, a lot of my content was still on Xbox, because I would go into the Xbox lobbies, because that's where everybody's reactions were. Like, that's where people, Xbox used to be, like, the place to get people's reactions, and, yeah, uh, yeah. like, it just had the stupidest system for the the Xbox party system and whatnot. And so it was literally like it was perfect, dude. And honestly, the quality of the mics I think makes it even oh, better. Yeah. That was the best <laughs> like, part. And you know, like they right? that was what that was what I was goofing on with my series too. Is like, you know, I'm yelling to my mom in the background and the mic yeah. quality's terrible. And it's like clearly I'm just a dude in his mom's basement. Um, you know, but that was that was what made it so fun. Uh but yeah, no, I and like that was the thing. Like I never got super good at PC. Like I was okay. I was I was pretty decent. I was pretty good. But I've gotten way better at PUBG. And like that was one of the things that like I just love trying to. It's the same thing of what you were saying. Like you like to play different games. I wanted mm -hmm. to hone my expertise at this new game. And I just was doing so bad. I wanted to do better at it. Um, <laughs> but I feel like I must have had some some wins at the point we were playing together. Like I I wasn't doing too bad at the time. No, you were doing fine. I noticed though, and I said this to Tom not too long ago. I said, I said to him, I was like, Stone has really come a long way since since I first played with him because yeah. I watched your content, and I was like, okay, like you weren't you weren't necessarily bad, right? But I could tell that you were new, right. at least to PUBG. I didn't know you were that new to PC though. Yeah, and now yeah. like Battle you can, Royale, you can like lock on to people, you can track people well. That was I've seen the thing. That. that was the thing too. Was uh, you know, I was, I didn't know battle royales. I didn't play H one. You had experience with that, right? Like, how long have A you been bit, playing yeah. on PC? Has this always been your platform? God, dude, what year is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do that. I do that. Every it once hasn't in a while. been. No, no, no. So, I have always been a console gamer. When I was younger, I played. Oh God, not Doom. Quake. I played Quake, just like the single player of Quake, on a laptop when I was probably six or seven. But the game was super scary for me back then. I was just a little kid, right? So, like, even just these blocky pixels was scary for me. But I played on, yeah, just a little laptop when I was six or seven. But up until, I think, about 11, 10, 11, or 12, I can't remember for sure. That's when I started getting into WoW. As soon as I saw a World of Warcraft video, I was like, oh my god, this game looks like this is phenomenal. This is out of this world, right? And especially when you're a kid, like it's a whole new experience going into an MMO where you can do anything, right? You can build up your character and all that. Oh, I have so, I have so many hours in WoW, dude. I feel you there. <laughs> I think we all do. I think we all do. Yeah, so when I was... WoW was a long long experience for me but i did get a little bit bored in between content patches and all that stuff so i would i would always mess around on free to play shooters cuz i would, i knew for a fact i was always good at shooters like no doubt about it any any console game if it was a shooter i could always become better than my friends in I an mean, hour do you feel like that was because you were playing quake or whatever when you were younger no no not a chance no it didn't give you at least some muscle memory or something there that you. No, because I only played it for maybe a month. Okay. Maybe a month. Yeah. Okay. And it was very often on. It was more like, okay, you can go on the laptop now for an hour. I was always outside as a kid playing sports and all that, right? Yeah, yeah. I rarely ever touch video games. Like, I would always want to, but sure. I was always forced outside and doing sports and all that stuff. So I was just way too busy. But yeah. 
I just I don't know what it was. I was just always been good at shooters. I can read people like what they're what they're gonna do. I feel like a huge portion of what you what makes you good at it though is how how good you are at aiming. Like that is incredible skill of just even hand eye coordination. I don't know, maybe it was even just going outside and playing sports and building that hand eye coordinate. Like did you do anything that was like throwing or anything like that? Yeah, I was I was pretty good at sports as well. <laughs> Interesting. I, uh, I played hockey. Uh, but do you think it was like, oh, good Canadian out there playing hockey? Oh, yeah. yeah I like yeah. it. <laughs> do you Waking think it was up at 4 a.m. Yeah, okay. So do you, but do you think it was like, like, okay, if you picked up a game faster than your buddies, do you think it was spending more time than them? Like, you just were so committed to like figuring out how to get better at it? Or was it just like, are you just casually just like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just doing it? Oh no, yeah, I've always been that way. Like I'm I'm slightly competitive in nature, but I enjoy having fun more than a competing experience, if that makes sense. Like I enjoy getting way better at things, being the best I can be at that thing, and then I'll kind of move on to something else. Sure. So but it is you consciously like figuring out how do you get better at this. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 See, I've, I think yeah. I think people underestimate the value of that. Like I, I think it comes naturally. It sounds like it just comes naturally to you of just wanting to be the best, wanting to compete at it. But, and you know, maybe that's not hard for you to put a lot of time into figuring that out. Um, it drives me, really. Yeah. But that's like, that's that, that driving factor of wanting to be the best at it. That's what's, uh, I feel like that definitely helps. So then you started doing, uh, you started playing more shooter games. Is that, because I know you played Counter Strike a lot, right? Uh, okay, no. so like how was your I have a lot of hours. That? I have a lot of hours in Counter Strike, but I haven't really played Counter Strike. Uh, I mainly use the game to practice aiming for sure, like flick shotting, snapping to things. Um, and that's where I kind of learned my sensitivity, and I started using that across all games. So, what I learned in that game, I've pretty much applied to everything else. So, when people say it's like, oh, I learned my aim in Counter Strike, it really, it really does help. That game does help. I feel like it's a very bare learn... bone game, too. That's the thing, yeah. Like recoil, you have to learn recoil patterns and all that stuff. But right. the majority of it is being able to snap to a target that you other eyes wouldn't expect is there, because in one bullet you can die, right? Yep. So when I went over to Rainbow Six Siege, I ended up doing very well at that, which was the game that I actually became a little bit more known for before PUBG. Hmm. That's where I started growing my channel mainly, and before that, it was a game called free. It was a free to play game called Dirty Bomb. Yeah, you so know what? I heard of Dirty game, Bomb, but I never actually played it. Uh, but that I was think where you started just your content. Recently, stopped development on that. But yeah, that was where. Yeah, you, I. Okay. And then, like, so, was it what? What made you want to even start doing that, or like upload content in the first place? Uh, it was kind of a. A joke, honestly. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you. It was a joke. I was I hadn't finished high school at the time. I it's like my parents went through a divorce and then so that kinda hit the family hard, hit me a little bit harder because it was kinda like a split right down the middle, right? Sure. <laughs> For everyone it's a little bit different, but it hit me pretty hard. And then so I was kind of just sitting around playing games, just kinda like I guess keeping my mind off of it. And my parents were always like, "Hey, like you got to do something. Come on, sure. get going. What are you doing?" And I was like, "I was like, I always looked at creators as like a good way, not a good way to necessarily make money, but it was a cool creative outlet. I loved how people were putting together their videos and all that. I was like, that looks cool, and people seem to be doing this as a job. So I thought maybe I could do it as a job. So I would just, I told my parents, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna do this as a job, and then I ended up actually liking it." I just said it so that they would kind of get out of my out of my <laughs> way so I could just go play games and do whatever again. So I, I was very back and forth with it. I would just kind of mess around with it. I was like, okay, if I'm going to sell this to them, I have to learn a little bit of stuff about it to prove to them that I'm actually like going forth and putting forth an effort, right? Absolutely. So, and then I ended up like really enjoying it. And then I noticed that my first video I ever put out was on World of Warcraft. Mm. so i put out a video on that it was just a little montage of me just 
killing people, right? Doing that was the hard to capture back stuff. in the day. Did you use like fraps or something? Do you remember? I did use fraps, <laughs> yeah, that yes. Was, <laughs> and that, dude, that so program terrible. killed your PC yeah, so terrible, because it captured dude. raw footage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. So yeah, you'd fill up hard drives real quick. Yeah, I remember yep, so. I tried to do that. It was terrible, dude. So terrible. That's so funny. <laughs> but the quality was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it worked. It worked. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I used that. I started editing up videos, and then I put them up, and it gave, like, when I actually released the first video, it gave me such a good feeling. It was like a, it was another drive, a driving addiction. And I was like, I really like this. I could actually become better at this. And it, it at that point, it had nothing to do with the money whatsoever i didn't think i was going to do it as a job or making an income off of it but i knew that world of warcraft was kind of like you had to be known from the start to get anywhere with that and i knew that my skills in wow was just i was never going to be able to compete at a high level and i didn't see the game growing anymore but i always knew i was really good at shooters so i ended up just playing and recording shooters a little bit more and I just became better and better and then that's the rest is kind of history I just keep putting out content on that now so but you switched over to like Dirty Bomb you said and then Rainbow Six Siege mm -hmm. uh, I mean for me I know when I was creating it was a lot of just like it it was almost like just building that library of content was like it was satisfying to see it being built and then being like oh yeah now you can go watch all these other videos did you have people watching and interested with that? I mean, what made you switch to Siege? Like, is it just you wanted to switch to Siege and people were interested? Yeah, I've, like, I've always been that way. I'll never put out content based around, like, what my audience really wants to see. It's more or less, like, that does factor in now because it is a job. But it's right. always been about what I think would make a good video or good content and what I would be good at. So I kind of tailor it towards my needs rather than the audience. And believe it or not, they always just the audience kept building that way because I guess they they saw that I was not only good at the game, they saw that I was enjoying myself. And I think that's a huge factor in creating content, right? If you're not enjoying yourself, then people are going to go elsewhere. No, dude, I, I completely agree. Um, I think that's a fantastic point. And it's like, you know... People think that they know what they want to, but I think what's even better is when you create a piece of content that people didn't even know that they wanted, and then yes. they stumble across it, and it's like, wow, that's uh, it's awesome. Um, and I think that comes from kind of your motivation of whatever it is to figure it out. So that's super cool. And then yeah, for sure. What what drove you over to battle royales? Then obviously those have been that's mostly what you play now, right? Yes, that's pretty much... I'm not going to say pretty much all I play because I will move on to other stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, we play like, like Division 2 and... Yeah, you know, for sure. You played Metro too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great games, great games. I love them. Um, So Battle Royales, when I first saw that, I always loved playing solo, no matter what. Like, not having to talk to people. I know this sounds weird. Not having to talk to people, though, it makes me focus a lot more. And... Like, that's how you can build your own skills. And, I don't know, just proving that you're the best, I guess, out of 100 people is is kind of a cool concept. And I think that's why everyone enjoys it. Not only that, you have so much freedom to move around and do whatever you want. See, that was, I mean, that was it, literally it. That's why I was playing, when I was playing solo too, I was like, and I kept dying. And I was like, dude, I want to beat everybody. I want to, I want to win solo. Like, yeah. And you're like, I'm better than this. I yeah, can do this. Yeah, right? exactly, dude. Exactly. And it's like, if somebody in this game is gonna win, why can't it be me? Why can't exactly? I do it? And that was what that was a huge drive. But okay, so for most of your content though, have you just been solo prior? Because like, obviously, we play a lot together now. You play with Tom, um, mm -hmm. and you still do a lot of solo stuff too. But has most of your content been solo? What, yeah, what, believe it or not, I been? grew a lot of my content solo. It's always been like maybe a little bit of con commentaries or if there were live commentaries, people seem to enjoy when I do live commentaries and stuff because I'm, I'm always fairly calm. I'm never screaming. And I yeah. think 
I think that plays a pretty big role because people, I don't know, some people really enjoy the screaming, right? That's also content, but... Well, my thing is, like, that. I, that's what's so interesting, too, like, when we play together is we don't really have the same personality with our uh, style. We do for a lot of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you know, one of one of my favorite things about playing with you and that really differentiated it for me, at least, was and why, like, I always was super down to play together again was... I would screw up or like I'm going for some stupid play. My heart, I'm, I do, my heart gets racing and I get way too hyped sometimes. And <laughs> sometimes I make some terrible plays, but like we're still having a good time and like it's not, we don't put each other down. Like we're just having a good time with it. And that's one of the things that like I always appreciate. And that's just how I enjoy games in general too. Um, but I, I very much started very like, I've only been solo content for ages occasionally i would do something with anybody else uh but that's what it's like i don't know that's what's been fun playing more with you as well as so many other people now especially with streaming because when i was not doing this full time i was in college i was working i didn't really have a lot of time to fit other things into the schedule and that was the thing too is um you know you're always down to play and uh worked at a good time too you know yeah yeah no, what i it, totally get that and i um, mean what was that what was your transition to like playing with more playing with me or playing with other people because like if you so, mostly did it solo why why start switching it up uh because it gets boring for sure that's like bottom line it gets boring playing solo and being able to bounce yeah bounce ideas off people and just being able to communicate and just enjoy yourself have some laughs have a good time mess around make mistakes right that's what's the best part about playing with buddies and i'm i was always very very picky with who i played with i don't enjoy people who rage because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. i'm playing games to have fun like yes i understand you want to get better or you want to be better but you yelling and screaming that you're not as good as what you want to be it's not going to change anything, right? No, 100%. And, and if I anything, mean, that just messes with your mentality when you do stuff like that. That's what I've really learned from you. And I mean, a lot of other streamers and people that I watch too is just like understand, like having a better mindset for the game and how to improve, as well as like I've learned a lot from you, from your gameplay, watching your gameplay, as well as playing with you, how you make decisions on things. That's one of the things that I think has made me a better player over these, you know. All, all the time we've been playing together. Um, I'm that's glad what, I could help, man. That's what I'm always striving to do. But, yeah, that's what... Um, I think that makes sense, too, because you said you didn't really like... You you haven't had a drive to compete for a game. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very similar in that, and, like, I don't want to be a pro. I've never had any aspirations to be, like, a pro at a game or play on a team or do anything like that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's always been much more about, like, having fun with it and Creating content is like a fun way to to do that, more or less. Yeah, exactly. Even though like, like, I'm I'm competitive with my content, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm not competitive like against being better than somebody else, right? I don't care if if someone's way higher skill skill cap than I am, right? If they're just top of the line, the best, it just doesn't bug. It just doesn't bug me. I have no problem with that. So. Like, I've always just been about being the best I can be and putting out the best content that I... Like, content that I would want to watch. That's yeah, how exactly. I've always based my content. Uh, when people ask me, it's like, what's, you know, what's the biggest tip you can give for content creation? Always put out something that you would want to watch. If you're looking at your content and you say, like, I wouldn't be interested in this, then, like, why are you creating it in the first place, right? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of finding, like, what's the unique... Uh aspect that you could pull that could pull out of it of, so, of whatever you like and it's not out there that's what i was always yeah. like i started back in call of duty days and that was like the most popular game so trying to create into that was literally what people are saying about like fortnite today of like you know it's oversaturated this is impossible but it's like finding how to create something unique around that that's part of the that's part of the process and part of the fun really is in figuring it out at least that's yeah. what it was for yeah. me like I mean, if you're just truly looking at becoming the best, you have to have some serious skills. You really do. Or else in a market like today, you're not going to be known. Like what, the top guys rise pretty quickly. What do you but, think about uh, Fortnite and 
how that game's been going. Because you haven't played that very much, but you played it for a while. I played it for a while at the start, and I was very happy with the game. Like, I enjoyed it myself. People didn't... My audience wasn't really all for it, definitely, because yeah. mm -hmm. it's got the cartoony graphics. Yeah, yeah. But I enjoyed it. It's one of those games that you can become good at, right? It has the building aspect to it, and then you have the editing aspect on top of that. And yeah. that's what I enjoyed the most. But now it's it's become a little bit numbing because you're just fighting building more than you're fighting players. <laughs> have, right? Have you have you watched <laughs> any of it lately? Not like I've seen clips here and there, but not yeah. a lot. The game's wild now. There's just so much to it. Well, I mean, that was one of the things uh, that I always loved loved about it was the building. Like the game was so. That's the thing. The sooner you realize that the game is about building and not about shooting, the better that yeah. you would be. And now everybody's yep. realized that, and it is to another level that is absurd. I don't know if you know, but they are having a uh, World Cup for Fortnite that's happening in, I don't know, a few more months. And mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be like, I don't know, I don't know how many millions of I think they're giving away $100 million of prize pool this year. Jesus. Yeah, it, I, I don't know what how much is specifically in this one, but man, I've been watching some of the gameplay of like some of the pros on it. The building in it is crazy there are 30 people all in this tiny shifting zone they're yep, building like they're just building walls editing walls it's, yep. it's mind-blowing dude it's i i haven't played it so long i kind of want to play it just to see what it's like and it's a 3d casually, chess but, shooter is what it is it's unbelievable where it's at because you need to be very quick you have to have the reactions of a fast shooter yeah. but on top of that you have to have the in intelligence of playing a chess like playing against a master of chess right because the other guy's looking to get above you and you have to figure out how to get above him or bring him down to your level right it's wild Dude. it's cool it's really cool to watch but it's like it requires thing, way yeah. too much energy for me to upkeep now no dude it's a, it's on another level now and that's what like i even see people saying they try and go back into public games and whatnot and everybody's just out there so good. out there fighting but i mean too like with that much prize money that's like you st that's building careers that's building so many careers and teams around this it's uh it's building retirements awesome. is what oh, it is yeah 100 percent. but that's what's <laughs> kind of exciting too to see like gaming even get to that stage like that's what people everybody likes to dump on fortnite uh, or at least a lot of people within my community i know do if i play it they're oh, not yeah. into it like but Dude, that is paving a way for some future game to come out and just keep blowing the hell up. Yep. It's, it's yep. super cool. Um, and I think the reason that game has done so well, like free-to-play has definitely been a part of that. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But a large portion of that is they came out with... They came out with an original idea. Battle Royale was like, okay, if they had just released a Battle Royale, if you think about it, if they just released their game as a Battle Royale with no right. building, it would not have taken off anywhere. Yeah. Not a chance. But the fact that they added in that other aspect that just changes the game entirely, that's what people love, yeah. right? They took a, a simple concept and they just like multi-stacked it. Yeah, and I and mean, that's what we, we see so many games getting into Battle Royales now, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, has there has there been any other Battle Royale that really stood out to you? Or, like, what's... I mean, obviously, Apex is out now. Apex is the only that, one, yeah. only because they took... They take so many different concepts, right? And thank God they didn't add building into that, because that would just be a nightmare. No, no. <laughs> Could you imagine no, the quick? I'm so pace glad of there's. I'm so that? glad there's no other games doing what Fortnite has done. Yeah, I, I'm ha I, like. I mean, I I think we're just more aligned on this of just shooters. Apex mm -hmm. is very much a more shooter first game. Um, yes, but damn, dude, did they take a lot of cool steps with that with that game? Uh, the pinging system is probably like one of the best things I've ever seen in a video game. Is that what I mean? Like, what makes it the best for you? What what do you think stands Apex out? The the best thing that they have in it? Pathfinder. Pathfinder. <laughs> I mean, Pathfinder's good. Pathfinder means... Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know. I feel like, to me, it's the shooting that they have in the game. The shooting aspect, like a direct recoil system that's similar to how... Uh, 
it takes all the luck out of the game. They're taking as much luck out of the game as, to me at least, that's what I see it as. They're taking luck out of the game where you know you can learn the recoil pattern, you can have skill there, you can get a resurrection mm-hmm. into the game. They're they're making it a f- more forgiving game. I don't even know if that's the right way to phrase it. But like you can be, uh, yes if you're no. a high skill player, you can dominate that game, right? Oh, yeah, like sure. that's what that's why you see. And more particular, high skill in shooters. Fortnite, you can be a... If you're a high skill player in Fortnite, you're going to win basically every game that you go into. Um, oh, yeah. And that's that's like one of the things that really differentiated that game was this is such a skill-based game, but that's skill based on building. This is skill mm-hmm. based on shooting. You know, if you could win a 1v3, you can come back to life and you could, you could own. Yeah, so you, see, that's the that's thing the is thing like with... Me. Thing. With PUBG, I, I see exactly what you're talking about. With PUBG, I'll, I'll reference all three games. With PUBG, it's only shooting. That's all that game is. You get right. caught in the open, you can still win a fight because your aim is way better than the other guy. 100%. And that's why I was, at one point, I was I was getting so bored with the game that I would just run through open fields and I would just rush people to see how good my aim was. Right. And just to keep practicing that, just to see, you know... Like these guys are behind buildings or camping or whatever, and they just corner peek their head, and I still win the fight even with no cover. Yep. But when it comes to Fortnite, it's almost the complete opposite. It's all around building. The shooting comes last. So the aiming is almost non-existent to it, right? Like, don't get me Mm. wrong. You do have to aim, but it's not nearly as tough. It's pretty easy. And then you have Apex that's kind of a little bit of combination of both if you get caught out in the open your aim has to be really good but if your positioning is that bad and the other guy is really good then you're going to lose the fight Mm. right so positioning and team play yeah you have have some abilities to help with the save and you also like i feel like and this actually maybe this is a better even explanation of what you're saying but the movement that's literally what Pathfinder's skill is, is his movement. If you yeah. can control his movement, his sling or his uh, grappling hook and whatnot, the sliding, comboing, chaining those things together and mastering the movement, he has one of the most unique abilities with that. And so that, that's He's definitely one of the one most of the annoying to fight. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. fight a good Pathfinder, oh yeah. Because he's just flying around like he's in the jungle. I like it, dude. All right, listen. Well, I also got a bunch of questions from my audience. We're getting a little later on the time here. I wanted to get in some of these ones, too. Um, They're kind of, I think they're for both of us to a certain degree. Some of them are just for you. But I just pulled out some of them. I had a lot of good ones. Uh, A a lot of them, too, like we've kind of already discussed in a way. So I'm just going to lead to some of the ones that we didn't touch on. Okay. Um, Alex A. asks... Who are your top three favorite streamers to watch or creators, um, whatever? Just, you know, like, do you watch any other content? Honestly, I don't really watch any content. Mine, mine is extremely varied. So if I'm, if I'm going on YouTube or something, I may watch some highlights of stuff because I just don't have the time to sit and watch a full gameplay. I just it's sure. that's just not for me and i mean i play so fast and all that stuff anyway a lot of a lot of the full games i've seen that gameplay before but the highlights are always like the best of the best right so you get to see the top of the stuff so occasionally i'll watch some highlights but uh i don't really watch anything on youtube like if anything gets uploaded in my subscriber list that i may want to see which is once in a blue moon it has to be something very rare then i'll click and watch that but for the most part, I'll just I'll watch movies or something. Do you? Um, I mean, even if you don't like watch all the content, do you look at any other streamers or creators and be like, try and get ideas from that or any inspiration? Like, maybe what? What? Yeah. Did you, what were so your inspirations? So that's going why. Into? That's exactly why I will watch other creators. It's not for mainly entertainment, but just to see what other people are doing, and. To, you know, take some ideas from that person, take some ideas from this person. It's like, okay, I like what they're doing, right? Yep. Maybe maybe I like their audio setup. Like, maybe this guy's really good with entertainment. Ent- entertaining, he's not necessarily good at gameplay. How can I be better at that, right? I look at all the different aspects that way, but I'm never really looking at 
entertainment online as sure. exactly that as entertainment. Dude, I'm I'm the exact same way. Like I I'll, I'll, I'll watch some things just for entertainment, but a lot of it I'm kind of just like analyzing like what are other people doing? What could I do better for my audience? Like mm -hmm. um those are a lot of the considerations that I, I mean, it's okay if anybody doesn't come to mind, but do you have any that do come to mind for that even? I love personalities. Yeah. I don't I don't really care to watch people for their gameplay. Like it's it's cool and all, but I I really I I guess I'm the complete opposite. People come to watch my gameplay and they might not not necessarily care for my my personality because I've seen the numbers, right? I know that Well, I'm I know curious. that people really enjoy. I forgot to even Go mention ahead. this earlier, but um you don't show your face on your content. True. And I mean, if you're watching personalities, that's like half the personality is somebody's face or like, you know what? I mean, I guess you could you could you could learn a lot about somebody in their style and how they create with the videos and the content. But why not show your face and your content? Like, just curious, not not, you know, just wondering. That's like one of the top questions people ask. Yeah, of course. I get that question a lot, too. It's like, what do you look like? How come I can't see you? Please show your face. I Yeah. And you did it in a kind of in your Christmas stream like a year ago, over a year ago. Or whatever. Playing a Santa you Claus. The, but you had a Santa face, all the stuff on and whatnot. People seem to enjoy that. Yeah, yeah it was fun. <clears throat> so I've done it before and I've done it off stream and I've even asked the opinions of friends and such. Yeah. And they just they, they honestly said like it doesn't really add to your content. Believe it or not. Like I'm just I'm just sitting here playing games. If I really go out of my way to entertain uh like through a camera and all that stuff, I could do it, but it then my gameplay would lack. So on one end of the spectrum, something is gonna be lacking. Whether it's yeah, you know, entertaining via camera. I know you love doing your camera, your camera stuff, and your reactions are great too, right? But I can't I noticed I can't really do both and I can't multitask that. Sure. So if I mean, anything, I would just have a camera on me and I would just look like a potato playing a game. It's different when you have a when you have a camera on you because, you know, everything you do is is recorded. That's um, the thing. And I I want it to add to my content, not take away from it. Sure. No, I mean it makes sense. To me, I see it as you are playing on hard you are playing this whole content creation thing on hard mode by not having <laughs> Uh, your face revealed on it because like that's just not even like you know I, I, and I don't like when I was creating content I never I, I kind of was like should I sh because all my content was like me yelling at people and putting text on the screen it wasn't my face on any of the content um, mm -hmm. but it was kind of like a development that I just eventually switched was like especially when I started streaming um, it was just kind of fun it was just like a better connection almost with the audience to me at least even if it was just something small. And I've seen streamers who literally have just the tiniest little face cam in the very corner, but it's just kind of built built a connection. I think that makes it easier, at least for me, and and that's why I think so many people do totally. it too, is like, you know, you can kind of, you know, see how pe somebody reacts to something physically, even if they don't react with their voice or something, but just like whether it's just like you jump at a moment or whatever. Um, I think that kind of... It just builds even more of a, and it's just kind of like it's being more. Even just like coming onto the podcast like this, to me, that's even more um, revealing than what your face even is. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, those are, those are the types of things I think a lot of people like. It, it's weird. Like if I saw Robert Downey Jr. post a picture, or like Elon Musk post a picture of what he's eating, like I would definitely want to see what that is, because I just think the dude is so damn interesting. And I, I just like, yeah. you know, and there's there's definitely people out there who think the same way of you and the type of content that you produce. And that's where, to me, it's like, um, I think there's a lot of value in it. And to me, it's playing on hard mode with all the content creation. But uh, no, it definitely it definitely is like I've I've noticed a lot of people say it's like I would actually prefer people without a face cam. Sure. And when I read that, it's like, OK, no, you wouldn't. Yeah. First of all, you haven't seen the face cam yet, so you can't really say that. Sure. And I think people that watch others without face cams, they just haven't seen it done to their 
I yeah. guess, nicheness, if that's yeah. a word. <laughs> and right? I mean, there's there's certainly people that don't even, they want to see gameplay for a game, for example. There's people that are so casual, they see a game come out that's literally like, hey, I just want to see gameplay of Division 2. I don't want to hear somebody yapping over it or see their picture. I just want to see the gameplay. And there's that mm -hmm. too, but like, when you're treating this as like, you know, you have an audience. The audience is around your gameplay and your content. That's like, that's part of it, you know? So it's, Yeah, exactly, it's, exactly. It's, that's why I think it's, it's on hard mode. And it that's adds a nice little homey environment, right? <clears throat> they can yeah. connect with you. That's just how humans are. We like oh, to sure, see dude. each other. That's how we connect, right? For sure. I mean, like, do you think you're ever going to go to an event? Or I? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, and I'll, okay. I'll probably swap over one day to having a face cam. It's just for right now I want to focus if, on. Even if you don't have, like... I've seen like Lyric, I think, is probably the one of the biggest streamers that doesn't have a face cam, if I'm not mistaken. But he still mm -hmm. shows his face with his other forms of content, like his Instagram yeah. or whatever. And I think, you know, there's a ton of stuff you can do there. But anyways, I I you know, it's a good answer. I'm just curious. As was everybody. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. Um let's see. How about we kind of touched on this? How do you get better with keyboard and mouse? And did you ever play? I mean, you kind of oh answered. You you did answer. Con, you played on console before, um, mm -hmm. and I think too, it was even just you kind of even answered it with just playing raw shooter game like Counter Strike and practicing there. But like, what's your what's your basic advice for somebody that's mouse and keyboard asking for tips? Uh, so if you're going to be you playing have a shooter... A, do you have a video on it even where you've discussed it we could send people to? No, okay. I don't have a video based on like how to get better in general, but I did post a video way back in the day on mouse sensitivity. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember. It was probably on Counter-Strike, I think. Um, It's probably even outdated for what I would say now. <laughs> but actually, it might not even be. We'll see. But... Definitely for keyboarding mouse, it's it's much like anything. It just takes practice, right? You have to be actively willing to get better at it. A lot of people say they want to get better and they just it's like, I, I'm not getting better. I'm not getting better. It's like, okay. What are you trying to do to get better? Right. Are you watching tutorials? Are you watching like I haven't posted any tutorials, so I can't direct anybody to that. Just watch all of Acolyte's to... videos that he uploads every day. No, because learn. that won't make you better. <laughs> that won't make you better. Like in terms of okay, movement, look. if you're already good at PC, like you yeah. already know how to play games and you want to get better, watching my videos will help you learn uh, like mechanics and such, what I'm doing to get around yep. fights and all that, right? So that'll help. The, like my gameplay is more advanced, I would say, but it won't help you go from beginner to mediocre to the back. Uh, being top of the line movement stuff. I'm not saying I'm top of the line movement. But. Sure. No. No. I completely. I completely agree with what you're saying. And the the thing too. I think you already even answered it earlier. Is just practicing. Like going into you go into Counter Strike and just go into practice your aim on it. Um, yes. Like that's something that you know. That's something that I've been doing recently. I play. You know. I just have like a free game that I got on Steam. That's literally meant to aim, train your aim. I took all the UI off of it. I don't play it with sound, and I just focus on my mouse movement and learning how to hit targets and actually track like where my eye wants the cursor to go is where my hand goes and get that rhythm down. But I do agree, like spending time to watch the gameplay of the game. That's how I've gotten like Pat. Not like I got to the beginner kind of stages by myself, but then getting mm -hmm. to kind of the next tier of like what the decision like using a door in order to block you while you're healing or something like wasn't something that you think about until you see somebody else doing it exactly whether that's in game and somebody else does it to you or you see somebody else doing it and doing it constantly well which is where mm -hmm. you can get a lot of value from um, yeah and watching them and if they're like staying calm while doing it all the better i love watching see, that that's the thing for me is that you stay you never freak out to any of the any of the stuff I'm here. I'm sitting here freaking out just like anybody would watching it, and then. But that's part of my problem too, and it's something I need to help control because part of that is I get my heart rate going too fast, and I get too hyped, and then I start mm -hmm. losing concentration and focus in that. But you're just cool as a cucumber, cruising through. Doesn't matter what's happening. You just keep consistently just boom, boom, boom. No, nope, just put the cursor on their head and click. 
That's uh, good to go. <laughs> yeah. Put it on their head quick. It's really as easy as that. I mean, okay, so the biggest tip I can give anybody for mouse and keyboard, if you want to focus on your aiming, get a big mouse pad, get a large mouse pad, and do not go over 800 DPI on a gaming mouse, ever. You know what's interesting is when I was on console, it's very much about you got to increase your sensitivity to get better because right. you need to be able to 180 on somebody and hit them. And the only way to do that is to increase your sensitivity, but still being able to control that high sensitivity from long range. Whereas on PC, it's more decrease your sensitivity and yes. get comfortable flailing your arm around like a maniac. <laughs> and the better you can well, get at that. The thing with console is, right, you have a toggle. So even if you push it all the way, it's only going to go to your max sensitivity and you're only going to turn at your max sensitivity. Right. With a mouse, if you move it slow, you're going to be moving slow. But if your mouse sensitivity is slow and then you move it quickly, you can do a flick, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to still move the same distance. It's just going to, you're going to be able to move faster. So if you lower your sensitivity, I always tell people, Put what your mouse on one side of your mouse pad and do a 360 in game. If you can do a full 360 in game on your full mouse pad, then you're good. But if you're doing like 14 360s, it's way too high. Yeah. Because on That's, small uh, movements, people at range like with a one X, right? And you're trying to mm -hmm. you're trying to trace somebody at long range. You're not going to be able to do it. It's going to be way too tough because, like you said, if you get your heart rate going and all that, your hand's going to be jittering and at a high sense. You, that's going to be a huge movement. Yep, exactly. Dude. Now, that's similar advice that I've heard as well. That's uh, it's beauty. It's good. Um, Dustin M. asked, streaming in Canada, do you notice are there any challenges versus counterparts? In the I don't know. I was just curious. Do you, I mean, like, do you notice anything different being in Canada? Has that affected any of your content? Has it made it, like, I don't know. Um, there Maybe there's none. Maybe there is something. I wouldn't say there's a difference, no. Uh, people notice my boots. But, sure. And, but, I mean, like, what uh, about, like, go going to... Protein, but. <laughs> what about, like, going to an event or something? Obviously, like, you're farther out. Like, has that deterred you from going to, like, a, a PAX or a E3 or anything like that? Or No, I, I have no problem with traveling and all that. Okay. But... I okay. just I just haven't done it because I prefer to focus on my work. If there's nothing beneficial about me going somewhere in terms of work, then I I generally just don't do it. That's kind of my rule of thumb. No, like I don't I mean, really just go for that's pleasure, it. right? Yep. No, that's completely it. It's to take like three, four days off to travel and do all that stuff, it just kills all your all your momentum. So it's like And not only that, justify? like I have an I have an addiction to what I do. I really I mean, do. Sure. I'd notice if I try to take a day off and I'll go do something else. I'm still thinking about this. But how much of that is an addiction of versus you just being like, that's just what you're passionate about. It's just what you enjoy just crazy. doing. <laughs> like, no, I think that's part of it is like, you know, if I could be doing anything, if I could just sit here and be paid the same and just play games all day and not have to do any of the content, mm -hmm. I would still be wanting to do content of some kind. Yes. I just enjoy like doing content is different from just playing a game. And I think Completely. a lot of people don't understand that. Um, but interesting. Uh, if I had, I, yeah, go ahead. Just, just to quickly add on, if I was to stop doing content, I probably wouldn't play shooters anymore. Mm. Isn't that weird? Interesting. Yeah, would you play like World of Warcraft or something? Yeah, just something <laughs> extremely laid back that I could just yeah. sink hours into. Right and yeah, it's not that I don't enjoy shooters. Right, it's just that I enjoy creating content on shooters. Do you play any games off stream that are just like, just games uh, almost never? Yeah, it's hard to just it's hard to spend the time. the time. Yeah, it's hard to spend the time. <laughs> How long have you been doing this full time? Like, did you did you have About a switch or was it now. just like you graduated high school and just like oh, I'm just gonna commit to doing this? So I graduated high school and I started. While I was in high school, actually, I had a part-time job at a police station. I don't know if I told you this already. Mm -mm, no. And I was I was a data entry clerk, so we would just the officers would call in and make a report of what happened. Right? They got a phone call. Blah blah blah. Right. This person stabbed another person. Whatever it is, we would just we would type up the data and we would do up the report all nice and get it ready for court if needed. So I did all that, and on the side I would do this. So I was doing. 
in the daytime I would go to, go to high school, right? I did an adult learning center is what I did. Mm. And like school was not to brag, but school was never really tough for me. I was just bored. Sure. But I never really skipped cl- I never skipped any levels, any grades. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of like I was like this is boring. It's like I'm not going to use any of this stuff, right? But you do, kids, go to school. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, it you do definitely do use some of it. Yeah. So I ended up doing that during the day and then I would immediately come home and I would stay up till like 3 a.m. if needed to create content or, you know, make a video. And if I didn't get the video that I wanted done, I would just completely scrap it. And, and then, then I would go to work if whenever whenever I had it. And so was it in, not until a point where you were like, okay, I'm actually making some revenue from this. I can quit that job. Was that when you decided to leave it? Yeah, so it, it became really bad because I was at work and like I would keep zoning out thinking about this and what I could do better at this. Yep. So it was almost like it was affecting that job and I was like, I'm just, I'm not enjoying waking up and coming to this police station every day and, and doing this. Not that it wasn't a ba- it was a bad job or anything. The people there were great and it was awesome working there. It was just, this made more sense to me. And I never thought I was going to do it as a full time. I thought it was just like a nice little hobby. What do you see? One of the questions was, um, uh, Pacman T said, where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Or even like, I don't know. Do you, like, do you have future aspirations with this? Ahead. You don't think that far? Okay. No, because this stuff changes so often. Sure. Like, look at the look at the move from the audience move from YouTube to Twitch or live streaming in general. Right. Over the course of a year, a lot of people started streaming more and just posting highlights on YouTube. Like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you just look at almost the past couple of years, so many people have started doing that. Live streaming has become the more the more niche thing, and then you just post the highlights and stuff to YouTube, mm-hmm. right? So over the course of a year, that happened. And I thought I was just going to be creating content on YouTube. So if I'm going to look 10 years ahead, I have no idea where this could be, right? Like I could be broadcasting on a stage in ten years only because I have to to stay relevant, sure. but right. So no, I have no yeah. idea. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the craziest thing is why and what people I think don't understand is like this is so fleeting. It's so like you want to keep keep going, but you see yourself still creating content and wanting to pursue this though. I would assume or doing something oh, yeah. with something with content creation, something with something. I think if I had to stop creating. YouTube videos altogether, creating content like dedicated videos, I probably would be really bored and I would start doing this part time. I would just stream part time. Uh, another question from Shane D was, uh, "What would you ever consider switching platforms? My audience, obviously a lot of them are on Facebook. They have a hashtag of Acolyte to Facebook. <laughs> what do you What do you got? I love that. That's yeah. great. Because oh. they come in my chat occasionally too, and they'll yeah. Do well, that. I figure, dude. I figure. You know, I, there are some people that for sure, and I, t- you know, I always tell everybody go watch them on Twitch and and whatnot. Um, but do you think that you would ever consider it? Like, is it? I don't know. So, what are your thoughts? If I was gonna take streaming more seriously and I was gonna do it full time, I would consider it. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say I would do it, but I would definitely consider it. Sure. Because it is a new platform for streaming, right? It would be a lot easier to grow, I think, on that than mm-hmm. than on Twitch. I mean, I'm a decent player at the end of the day, so Twitch might be my platform, just because like I have that advantage over some people. But I don't know. Like that might be really good over on Facebook as well, right? Because I don't know. I mean, Just like, it's a I've new platform. Obviously, been telling I've been telling him for a long time that if he were to bring his skills over to Facebook, people would just be blown away at what the guy does on some of these games, and it, it would do incredibly well. But uh, I, I think there's definitely like I have a ton of respect for the people on Twitch. I love watching Twitch personally a lot of times. Um, you know, there's great creators there, and uh, you seem to be doing super well there too. So. Yeah, and that's only like I'm only doing it part time, but people keep keep showing up and they seem to enjoy it, right? I have fun sure. every time I stream and I never I try never to stream if I don't feel like it. 
right? So that always keeps it, hopefully that keeps it fresh. But like, the thing is, like you say that you're part-time on it, but you'll do like, I mean, it doesn't, I I think that's comparative (laughs) to uh, somebody who, like a lot of the people on Twitch stream 10 hours a day. So yeah, it looks like it's part-time, but there's also people on Twitch that literally only stream one hour a week. The, the guys at, like, Neebs Gaming, for example, I don't know if they would consider themselves streamers either, but they do a show every single week that's an hour long or two hours long or whatever they do, and their whole audience comes around that, and that's just a part of your content. To but me, it's also scheduled, like, right? Sure, but, like, you know, a TV show only has an hour, like, a 30-minute show f- seven of the, or ten of the weeks out of the year. That doesn't mean that it's necessarily part-time. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, I, don't I don't think it's part so. Of I time. guess you could include it in my content creation, yeah, like yeah. as a whole. And a lot of that content you use from your stream is for your content on your channel too, right? Believe it or not, I actually don't use a lot of stream footage. Yeah, you do the, because you, you kind of use I, it yeah, separately. I do. Yeah, occasionally I'll create like a if we have a really good game on stream or something. Right. The problem is, is I can't real. I don't have as much control over the video editing portion which I don't like. Sure. So if we record it offline, right, I can cut anything anywhere. Yep. And I can mix it all together. So people have no idea what happened where, right? Sure. And although it might be a little deceiving, I think it's better for the viewing pleasure to do it that way. Yeah, I mean, so, it's, it's, piece, it's obviously your content does extremely well, so... But that's part of your creative process. Like, yeah, I enjoy doing that. Like, I'm trying to create the best content video portion that i can a video on youtube rather than you know live streaming at the end of the day believe it or not live streaming i don't feel the satisfaction i would from creating a good video it just it feels like if i don't even have a decent stream day it feels like a wasted it just feels like a wasted day i feel you i mean some days there's just not not a lot of great content sometimes it's awesome same thing though when you record it's like sometimes when you record you could have an entire day that's thrown away. But it's the true, is, too, and then like, I'll feel like I need to I needed to stream that day in order to make up for it. Sure, <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> a lot uh, of back and forth there. Final question about some battle royales, uh, Joseph BS. Do you think the top popularity balance will ever go back to multiplayer type ba- uh, shooter games versus battle royales, or like what do you think? What do you think the future for like that is? Do you think it'll ever go back? Because like Call of Duty, um, Battlefield, those were the popular games. Yes. So I don't think uh, it has to have. Okay, I'm going to use an example. Escape from Tarkov, because of the route that that game is going. Um, it, it's similar to a battle royale, just because you have that freedom. You can go wherever you want, right? And, and at the end of the day, you actually don't have to kill anybody. You can just extract with your gear, right? Mm-hmm. So with a multiplayer shooter, we've seen it over and over again, like Battlefield. You have some freedom to do whatever you want, but at the end of the day, you're trying to, trying to pad your stats, right? You're trying to get the most kills or whatever. Or if you just want to have a little bit of fun with friends. Sure. They would have to... We, like We've seen all these concepts before in the multiplayer genre of just team versus team. So they could do it, but they would have to bring in like the freedom of a battle royale and possibly the hardcoreness of a battle royale to make it bigger. Like multiple team aspects within the same game, mm-hmm. like one v like three v three v three or something like that. Right? I could see them doing it, but they would also have to add a monopoly of something like how Fortnite has added the building, something to make it fresh. Yeah. So I can see them doing it, but they would have to add something like that or else it just won't, it won't pop off. It just won't do it. That's where I think like they have some advantage where they already have a brand. They already have a name. They already have a game. There's things like that's already connected with a lot of people. But from everything I've seen, nostalgia and those types of things just aren't enough to make that be like Fortnite. Right, I don't think that's going to mm-hmm. be the next Fortnite. I don't even think necessarily another battle royale game will ever be able to do what Fortnite did. I think it's going to be no. more like this is what like Minecraft was the biggest game, and that was just like open world. They had an actually a couple elements of like a battle royale, 
like they could even make a modded battle royale type game. I believe that's where it even started. Yeah, I think it was community. like I think it was like that, and Arma had a version of it. Um, yeah, I think it was there to Arma to H one. Uh, was it H one next? I think yeah, and then I'm pretty sure they probably they, PUBG they and over, and then PUBG and on onwards. Yeah. So, but like to me, battle royale. I think it's personally. I think it's here to stay for at least the next few years. And mm-hmm. if anything dethrones it, my guess is that it's going to be something else. I I don't think it's going it to be another battle royale. It has to be something else. It won't be another be battle royale. Like it's going to be some. I, I think it definitely go the direction of something like a Tarkov, like uh, you know, in that direction. But well, that's what I was saying on my stream not too long ago. If if there was gonna be another battle royale that possibly takes the cake when it comes to above, I guess the threshold of gamers, like not the younger audience. We're talking more mature gamers. It would have to take what PUBG did. Like the aspect of that uh, that end game, like one v one, where you're absolutely sweating because you know you want that win, right? Right. I don't really get that with Apex, and I never got that with Fortnite, right? But I think it's the realness of PUBG that that brought that in. And I think if a game came in and took what PUBG did and improved upon it, made it really hardcore, people would fall in love with that. Like it would be a true battle royale experience, right? I they would have to add that. in the ability to play aggressive, not as much camping, right? But they could do it, and that could be the next Battle Royale, but that would be the only one ever, and that's the only thing I could ever see anybody doing. It would have to be hardcore with a new, I don't know, just the best gunplay. Yep. No, I mean, I I, I definitely uh, I see that too. I, and I, honestly, I don't even think, even if they did that, I'm not sure if that would even how that would even work now with PUBG. Like, do you still like PUBG? I don't I don't mind it, but I just don't agree with all the changes that have made. Like, the game is very bland to me now. I don't know. Yeah. I don't get anything from winning anymore. Like, dropping down and finding weapons or pistol. It's, <laughs> it's just not balanced. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel you there. Cool, man. Well, uh, this went a little longer than I initially planned, but thank you for That's joining right. me. Well, thank you for having me. It was awesome. Yeah, dude. This was uh this was super cool. Fantastic first uh guest to have on the show, which is super awesome. You got anything to plug? <laughs> no, I don't have anything to All plug. All right, I'll plug it for you. Go to Aculite's <laughs> YouTube channel, go to his Twitch channel, follow him up. I'm trying to convince him to post stuff more elsewhere too. I'm working on it, but uh, you know. If you want to keep updated with me, uh twitter is probably the best way because i always that's always linked into everything right so at the acolyte or the acolyte i did it as a joke obviously but uh yeah it's the best way to follow me perfect man all right well uh absolute pleasure catching some uh games thank you very much for having me for sure hell yeah (laughs) talk to you later cool later ladies and gentlemen thank you guys so much for watching for listening uh, awesome first show with Acolyte and uh, as a partner I definitely want to do some more of this this was a bunch of fun and if you want to help rate the channel on any of the podcast platforms this is out everywhere feel free to do so thanks so much for watching much love Soul Mouse 64 over and out